Before Diwali, a showroom owner increases the price of product by 35%, then introduces two successive discounts of Rs. 10% and 15% respectively. What is the percentage loss and percentage gain? Now we have to calculate percentage loss and percentage gain. So it will be wiser to take this cost price initially as 100 rupees. So whatever we will get at the end of the day will be calculated on the base 100. So the per calculation of percentage loss and percentage profit will be much more easier. So assuming initially the cost price was 100 rupees. Now we are given that the price of the product is increased by 35%. So increment of 35% is nothing but plus 35. That is my selling price initially is 135 rupees. Now on this I am going to give a discount of 10%. After that let's suppose this is X and I am to I am going to give a discount of 15% on this and this is my actual selling price and I have to calculate the difference of this with my cost price with taking the base as cost price. So let's do the calculations 10% of 135 is equal to 13.5 so as there is a discount I am going to my subtract 135 minus 13.5 so my x is equal to minus 13.5 so this is nothing but 121.5 rupees. Now I have to calculate the 15% of 121.5. So this is nothing but 18.225. So I am going to subtract 18.225 from this and I am going to get my selling price the actual selling price is 103.275 now as you can see that selling price is higher than cost price so this is a profitable transaction and the profit is nothing but 3.275 subtracting the selling price from the actual price taking the base as 100 because this is our cost price multiplying this by 100 I'm going to get my profit percentage as 3. 275 percentage now this is the traditional approach now <coughs> there is a shortcut involved in this question whenever there are successive discounts this formula is valid for successive discounts suppose a percent and then b percent then the actual net effect is nothing but a percent plus b percent minus a multiplied by b upon 100 now in this scenario i am substituting the values minus 10 multiplied by 15 upon 100 so this is nothing but 25 minus this gets cancelled this is <clears throat> 3 by 2 minus 1.5 so this is nothing but 23.5% discount on 135 rupees. So on calculation 23.5 percentage of 135 this is nothing but so this turns out to be 31.725 now subtracting this from 135 I am going to get my actual selling price as this is the value which we also got over here so the net effect for successive discounts is calculated like this and after that I have calculated the discount on rupees 135 and subtracted that from the initial selling price so the calculations become much easier after using this formula so this is the formula for successive discounts in case the price is increased this negative sign turns into a positive sign which we have seen earlier in the percentages when there is successive increase whenever there is an increase this negative sign 
gets changed by a positive sign whenever there are discounts or the price is reduced this sign becomes negative i hope the concept is clear to all of you over here we are given that nirmal singh purchases 125 reams at rupees 80 per ream he spends 280 rupees flat on transaction paid octro at the rate of 40 paise per ream he paid 72 rupees to kuli he wants to have a gain of 8% what must be the selling price of his ream now let us calculate the total investment that nirval singh has done over here so this will be nothing but 120 multiplied by 80 as there are 120 rims at the rate of 80 per rim then there will be the cost of transportation which is 280 which is independent of the number of rims then there is the octroi part now octroi part is 40 paise per rim so this is 40 paise per rim so the number of rims are 120 Now, as the entire calculation is happening in rupees, I have converted this forty percent to rupees plus rupees seventy-two. So this is the cost which he paid to Kuli. So this is nothing but nine six double zero plus two eighty plus forty-eight plus seventy-two, and this turns out to be ten thousand rupees. now we are given that he needs a gain of 8 percentage all right so the selling price has to be 8 percent more than the cost price so this is the investment or the cost price for nirmal singh so 108 by 100 multiplied by 10000 This is equal to one zero eight double zero. So this is the selling price. Now for calcul, this is the selling price for one twenty rims. Now in order to calculate the cost of single rim, I have to divide this by one twenty, and I am going to get the price per rim as ninety rupees. This part is nothing but multiplying by the multiplication factor. 8% profit is nothing but 1.08 multiplied by the cost price so this is the equation over here which we have written i hope the calculations are clear over here a dealer sold two of his watches for 500 each so the sales price selling price is common on one of them he lost 10% on other he gained 10% his loss or gain percentage in the entire transaction was this is the direct application of our shortcut we know that in such transactions there is always a loss involved and percentage loss was nothing but p square by 100 over here p is nothing but 10% so 10 square upon 100 is equal to 1% loss so this question is solved within 5 to 10 seconds only a shopkeeper sells one third of his goods at a profit of 10% another one third at a profit of 20% and the rest at the loss of 6% what is his overall profit percentage now in most of the sums we took our entire value as rupees 100 but if we take 100 over here the calculation will be bit tough because we have to calculate on the one third of the goods and as you know that 100 is not divisible by 3 so i am going to assume the entire value that the shopkeeper sells to be 300 this is going to make my transactions uh, transactions or my calculations very easy so choosing the actual value or the part the numbers for the calculation is very important part to save time so now let's look at it when i assume 300 to be my entire value the question becomes very very easy now what we have to do is a shopkeeper sells one third of the goods so one third of 300 is nothing but on 100 he gets a profit of 10% so multiplying this by 1.1 our multiplication factor this is 110 on another transaction that is also one third he takes a value profit of 20% so the multiplication factor is 1.2 so this turns out to be 120 this is 100 plus 10 for those who can't remember and want to do with the traditional approach this is for them 
in the one third that is the third part there is a loss of six percent so i'm going to multiply this by 0 0.94 so this is 94 this is nothing but 100 minus 6 so adding this this is my cost price which i have assumed earlier and this is 230 and 2326 now i have to calculate sorry this is 324 the as i can see that the selling price is more so the profit percentage is 324 minus 300 upon 300 multiplied by 100 so this is nothing but 24 by 300 multiplying this by 100 this this gets cancelled and i am left with 8 percent profit so my answer is 8 percent so the main crux of this sum is nothing but assuming the cost price to be 300 or anything that is easily multiplicable now i chose 300 because in the denominator when i add the cost price this zero zero gets cancelled easily and my calculations are on the easier side in this question we are given that rudra went to purchase a swiss chocolate box the shopkeeper told him to pay 20 percent tax if he asked the bill rudra manages to get a discount of five percent on the actual selling price so this actual selling price is not comprising of the taxable bill because everyone doesn't need a bill over here so this is a point to remember now he already paid the shopkeeper 3325 without the tax besides he manages to avoid 20 percent of the tax so it is made clear that he doesn't uh, want a bill over here on the already discounted price what is the amount of discount that he has received now let us assume that the chocolate is of rupees 100 this is the selling price which i am assuming so the, if rudra wants a bill there will be an increment of 20 percent the selling price with tax is equal to 120 rupees now we are given that he manages to get a five percent discount on the actual selling price which is this so the <coughs> actual or the discounted selling price is nothing but 95 rupees 100 minus 5 percent so the effective discount that he manages is of rupees 25 this is the actual selling price now the shopkeeper gives him 20 percent off as he doesn't want a bill and then he manages to get an extra 5 percent so he gets a discount of rupees 25 all right on the selling price that he pays that is of rupees 95 now using the unitary method let x be the discount while rudra pays rupees 3325 at the end of the day he is going to pay 95 rupees this is clear to you and in the question we are given that he pays 3325 rupees so on 95 rupees he gets a discount of 25 rupees so on 3325 rupees how much discount is rudra going to get this is our question if i write it in terms of equation so my x is nothing but 25 by 95 multiplied by 3325 this is equal to 8 to 175 rupees so the effective discount or the amount of discount that he has received is rupees 875 this is the usage of the unitary method question number 15 this is a bit challenging sum so to have it <coughs> give it a try first wholesaler amartya buys two articles for rupees 600 he sells one of them at a profit of 22 percent and then he sells the other at a loss of eight percent and makes no profit or loss in the end what is the selling price of the article that he sold at a loss now we are given that the cost price of both of them is together is rupees 600 he sells one at a profit of 22 percent another at a loss of eight percent and makes no profit or loss at the end of the transaction so let me assume c1 to be the cost price of one article c2 to be the cost price of the second article now we are given that c1 plus c2 is equal to 600 
this is my equation number one now let me assume that on article number c1 he makes a profit of 22 percent so the selling price will be 1.22 c1 22 percent profit plus 8 percent loss that is 0.92 c2 i am using the multiplication factors over here loss of 8 percent now this is also equal to 600 as at the end he makes no profit or loss so the addition of the selling price is also going to be equal to 600 this is my equation number 2 and both of these are equal so on solving these two equations I am going to get my value of C1 is equal to 160 rupees and C2 600 minus 160 that is 440 rupees now as you can see that C1 is so let us calculate the selling price of article 2 now C2 is our assumed cost price so the selling price of C2 is nothing but 0.92 multiplied by C2 this is equal to 0.92 multiplied by 440 rupees this is equal to 404.80 for those who didn't understand that why we assumed profit on C1 and profit a loss on C2 it was just an assumption but after getting my calculations or the answers it was clear that the loss is on article number 2 only.